Okay, a few videos ago, I did a video about Lit, the world's brightest paint, and I shined my brightest flashlight on it to see how well it glowed in the dark. And a lot of people wanted to see more of this paint, so they had a lot of good suggestions. So this video is gonna take those suggestions and see what happens. So first, I'm going to be seeing what happens when I mix Lit with Black 2.0. So let's see what happens when I mix the world's brightest paint with the world's darkest paint. And then there were a lot of questions about why the paint glows green. So let's see if the paint actually absorbs different colors. Can you charge it, let's say, with red light and will it still glow green afterwards? Let's check that out. And then also people want to know if I have some of this glow in the dark substance painted on one wall and some on another wall, will they just continually charge each other back and forth, back and forth and stay lit forever? So I'll check that out and see if that's the case. And I'm also going to try painting my hand with the world's brightest paint and see if just from the heat of my hand it can glow in the dark. Okay, so Black 2.0 is the blackest black in the world. It's the blackest paint available on the market. So a lot of people had the question, what happens if you mix Black 2.0 with Lit? Does that mean that the black will glow? So let's check it out. Let's see what happens when you mix Black 2.0 with Lit. Okay, first let's get our black 2.0. Okay, now let's mix in our lit. So I'm not sure if the lit is going to shine through this black. It's pretty black here. Let's try to give it the benefit of the doubt and do a little more of the lit pigment. Okay, so the black 2.0 is not dry. So you can still see that it's kind of shiny. When it's fully dry, you can't really see the texture of it at all because it's so black. For example, here's a ping pong ball that I painted with black 2.0 and you can't even tell it's round. Okay, so now let's check out if it glows. So what are your guesses? Do you think the light is gonna shine through the darkness? Let's check it out. Okay, let's shine the flashlight on the black paint. Three, two, one. Whoa, it does light up. Look at that. And right where I touch it, it goes black again. That's cool. It worked. I did not think that was gonna work. Let's try that again. Okay, let's see if the light can shine through the darkness. Whoa, it did. Look at that. <laughs> it's glowing through the black and then where I touch it with my spoon it goes black again because the light couldn't absorb deep enough into it that is awesome the light still got through the blackest black so this is so cool so it's totally black but then if I use even a black light on it that's so cool it glows in the dark. It's weird, it seems like a contradiction. It's basically this dark black paint that turns light when you shine a black light on it or a flashlight. Okay, so I did not expect that. The lit totally was able to get through the black 2.0. What was really interesting though is only the surface particles were able to radiate light. If I stirred it again with the wet paint, then the paint that was stirred up wasn't charged at all. And that makes sense because the particles that were slightly below the surface layer of paint weren't able to get any light at all and so they weren't charged. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to test is can you charge glow-in-the-dark materials with different colors of light? For example, if I shine red light on this, will it still glow? And why does glow-in-the-dark usually glow green? Okay, so I'm going to take my flashlight here with a red filter on top of it and then I'll place my glow-in-the-dark paint over it and see if it still gets charged. So you can see that it's lit up already just from the residual light from the garage that I had. So let's see if it gets any brighter than this just by putting on the red light. Okay, so you can see that it did charge it. You can see in the center there that it is brighter, but not that much actually. Okay, now to compare, let's see what happens with a white filter on it. So it's a lot brighter, huh? So it does make a difference what color of light you shine on it. 
That's a big difference, that's surprising. So it looks like the green wasn't able to absorb red very well. Okay, so that was interesting. So even though both intensities of light were about the same, the red light definitely wasn't able to charge the glow-in-the-dark pigment as much as the white light. That means it's taking the red wavelength of light and turning it into a green wavelength of light. So it's shifting the wavelength. It should come at no surprise to you because if you've ever been around glow-in-the-dark materials and black lights, then you know that glow-in-the-dark glows in black lights. So I have a black light here. This emits ultraviolet light. So watch what the ultraviolet light does to the glow-in-the-dark pigment. <laughs> cool, huh? So the ultraviolet light is easily absorbed by the pigment here, but then the wavelength is shifted into the green wavelength range. And so not only do glow-in-the-dark materials absorb light, but they're also able to shift the wavelength of the light. But why green? Well, it happens to be that the pigments that can hold on to light for the longest amount of time and can absorb the biggest range of wavelengths are also the pigments that re-emit that light in the green wavelength of light range. And that's why you usually see glow-in-the-dark materials as green. Okay, now finally let's see what happens if I charge this glow-in-the-dark material and then hold it right against another surface of glow-in-the-dark material and see if it can charge itself. Okay, so right here I have some glow-in-the-dark material that hasn't been exposed to light. And then this one, I'm going to shine the world's brightest flashlight on it and charge it as much as I can. And then I'll turn the flashlight on, immediately pick this one up and place it right next to this one and hold it there. And then we'll pull it off and see if it actually charged this one. So basically seeing if you can charge another glow-in-the-dark material with this glow-in-the-dark material. Okay, first let's charge this one with 32,000 lumens. Three, two, one. Holy cow, that is bright. <laughs> Okay, I think we got it fully charged. Turn it, turn it off. That is bright. Put them together. Okay, they're sandwiched together now. Let's see if the other one actually glows. It didn't charge it at all. Huh, I thought it would somewhat, but it didn't at all. Okay, let's try it a different way. Let's see if I charge all of this pigment here, which can hold a lot more light, because since this is spread out pretty thin, maybe it's not giving off enough light. So let's charge the bottle of the actual pigment itself, and then I'll set it on here and see if it does anything. Okay, so first let's charge the pigment. Three, two, one. Okay, it's pretty bright. Let's turn it over and put it on here for a bit. Okay, it looks pretty bright on there. Let's see if it actually charges it. Still nothing, huh? That's surprising, I thought it would be able to charge it. And then as soon as I remove it, it doesn't glow at all. Not even the slightest little bit. Okay, and for the final test, because the lit can get charged from heat also, let's see if I paint my hand with it, that it will indefinitely glow in the dark just from my body heat. Okay, painting my hand. Okay, let's wait for it to dry and see if we can heat it up and it'll glow just from the heat of my hand. Okay, so here's my glow in the dark hand. Looks like it's working well. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to get to them and I'll see you next time.